Unlike in Cantola, where they had withdrawn once they had dislodged the Amanda Bailey from the targeted area, in this particular case, um, the Matabili were still in control. They'd spent all day fighting. They had suffered 12 MRF men killed, which included Kershaw, who was one of Puma's right-hand men. But the Amanda Bailey were still masters of the situation. They had actually achieved absolutely nothing. Even as they withdrew, the Amanda Bailey continued to follow them and, ha and um, harass them. Baden Powell was in charge of the rear guard. As the column withdrew, the rear guard set fire to the bush so that if the Amanda Bailey were following, that they couldn't creep up unexpectedly. The Amanda Bailey jeered and mocked the column as they withdrew. The column tried to drown the sound, rather unsuccessfully one imagines, by singing the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. <laughs> I'm not too sure why. Well, that brings us to the close of August the 8th. Thing, uh, the Amanda Bailey had definitely won this one. Not only had the MRF suffered a very heavy, um, suffered very heavy casualties, but they gained absolutely nothing. They were forced to retire back to Sugarbush Camp, leaving the Amanda Bailey flag. This was in fact the last battle fought in the rebellion. Now the following day, Baden Powell um, decided that they should try a an engagement similar to the one at Infantola, that the column should actually reach the stronghold by dawn and attack the stronghold at dawn. Infantola, as you saw when we went there yesterday, the country is very open until you get to the stronghold. Here, the country starts getting very broken up even before you reach the area of the stronghold. The column was approximately 800 men on horseback and on foot. You can imagine that this column would have been quite lengthy. And at night, probably very difficult to communicate, especially when the country starts breaking up. Breaking up. Now, the scene as dawn, well, before dawn broke on August the 9th, you have the scene where Baden Powell, who is leading the column, is on the top of Chingingoma. And he is looking down upon the rear of the column, who are fumbling around in the ravine, hopelessly lost. The column managed to regroup later on, but this time were content to stay far away from the stronghold. I'm not too sure where they regrouped, but they stayed very far away from the stronghold and just pounded it at long range with their artillery. They didn't want to get, um, one guesses, any closer to the, to the Amanda Belly than they really had to. That, in night of August the 9th, was spent by the column out of camp. They didn't return to camp that night. They spent it, I'm not too, again, I'm not too sure of the site, on an open, raised hill, so they could command a good view around to make sure the Amanda Bailey didn't creep up on them. And this is um, where I mentioned uh, much earlier on, um, on Friday night, that they had gale force winds. It was terribly cold. The mules carrying the blankets had got lost when Baden Powell managed to fragment the column and it started raining towards midnight. You can just imagine how those 800 odd men must have felt. Not only had they spent the last two days trying to dislodge, yeah, really a bunch of what they would have thought as savages from the hills. They had the most up-to-date equipment. They were probably the most modern army in the world. 
They had failed to do that. They had seen some of their closest friends killed. They had tried again to fight the stronghold, and they had failed. And now they were stuck on a windswept hilltop with no blankets. But that battle was probably the worst in the whole rebellion, in that once the battle for Sikombo stronghold, the battle of Chingongoma, had been fought, it was patently obvious now that there would be no way that the Matabi Land Relief Force could take the Matokas by force of arms unless they brought in a lot more men. Carrington told Rhodes that he would need at least 5,000 imperial troops if he were to have any hope of taking the Matokas. And Rhodes was paying for this out of the charter company's pocket. A perceptible air of gloom was cast over the whole force by the untimely deaths of these brave comrades in arms. The loss of Major Kershaw was keenly felt by all. His nerve and courage during the operation had become proverbial. After the burials on the Thursday morning, the troops were drawn up into a hollow square and General Carrington briefly addressed them, congratulating the force on the achievements of the previous day and at the same time expressing deep regret at the loss of valuable lives which the defeat of the rebels had cost. Major Effie Kershaw, Lieutenant Hardy, Sergeant Major McCluskey, Sergeant Innes Kerr, Troopers, Holmes and Park. And two others were also brought to be buried here. I didn't think I had time to mention, but in the battle, Brand's battle, the Nikak's battle, at near uh, uh, Glen Latigan, they had to leave the dead where they fell. It was much too difficult. Fine. No the obvious of who lay down the lines for us, that we pray for our country, that we pray for ourselves. Let us pray for our brothers, to our Lord Jesus Christ, who say, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Baden Powell then rode on horseback 30 miles back to Bulawayo, where he spent the rest of the month recovering from fever at the Hotel Rio. And on the 8th of September 1896, BP headed north to the Mashonaland campaign. And on the 19th of December, boarded a boat from Byra to Southampton. Baden Powell visited Gordon Park in 1936 and had this to say. Here, in the wildest of many jungles I have seen in different parts of the world, is a truly lovely camping ground. Die away, them. <laughs> <laughs>